Hey everyone, so I just did laundry, but that's not super important. But today we're going to talk a little bit about Docker. Now the real power of Docker is creating a build system or a build flow for your application, but we're not really going to dive too deep into that. We're going to mainly focus on this part. It helps developers. And in particular, my normal use case for Docker is having a local database. Usually it's Postgres, but in today's video, we're going to just set up both Postgres and Mongo and see how that goes. So first you will want to download and install Docker. And once you do, you can run Docker version and you should get a prompt back saying something. Now I'm on Linux, so I'll have to prefix all of my commands with sudo, but if you're on a Mac, then you won't need to. And what you can do is run the command of Docker image and we can use the Unix command of ls, which is just list all of them. And for some reason, I have three different images for Postgres, but that's fine. So what a Docker image represents is similar to a disk image in that each of these are environments where Postgres lives, kind of like a virtual machine, except what Docker gives you is a machine without all the fluff. So there's just Linux, there's no desktop environment or anything. And that allows the image to be a lot smaller so you could download and use them much easier. And to get images, you can go to a website called Docker Hub. And this website is just a host for all the repositories that are currently on Docker. So we could get something like Nginx or MongoDB. So a lot like Git, you could Download an image by using the command of docker pull and we're going to pull mongo. So sudo docker pull mongo and this is going to download the latest version of mongo. Cool. And then to run an image, you're going to create a container. So we'll do sudo docker run and then we'll run mongo and you'll get all of these prompts. But this is basically the Mongo database running in the, not in the background, but in your terminal. So if we quit out of this, we'll want to instead run it in the background. And I'm gonna just add this here. To run in the background, you'll add the option of dash D, and D stands for daemon or detached. And then another useful option would be dash P, which is the port. And what port is this on? So the default Mongo port is 27017, 27017. So the way the port option works is that the right side is the port that you're listening to on the container. And then the left side is the port that we're exposing on our machine to listen to that same port. So if we run that, it'll be in the background. All right, the options, the ordering matters. So you need to add the options first because these will be the options for Docker. Because if you add it after the image name, that will be the options for Mongo itself. And now Mongo is running in a Docker container inside of our machine. To see what containers are running on your machine, you could run sudo docker container ls, which is still the Unix command for list. A little annoying because everything's so scrunched up. So I'll move this terminal to another workspace. And here's all the information that we have. So he, we have the container ID, the image, as well as the port number that we're listening to. And then we have the container name, which is awesome Blackburn. You also use shell commands to connect to the inner container. So we'll do do sudo docker exec. And this will execute commands. We'll want to run the option of IT, which is interactive. And then we also need to add the Docker image name or container name. And all of that is the prefix of what the command that you want to run inside of it. And I want to run Mongo to open up the Mongo shell. And that's, this is the Mongo shell. So I don't remember MongoDB's commands. Is, is it like list DBs or something? Oh, it's just show databases. There we go. So we have admin, config, local. Anyways, I'm going to quit this. 
as the last thing that we'll need to do is to start the docker container sudo docker and uh, you'll have to add container so that docker knows which command that you're running and then i am doing stop awesome blackberry now it's not enough to just stop a container because even though we'll list it this will list out all the running containers which we don't have any but if we add the dash a so it will show all the hidden containers we still have a few why do i have so many um okay so after stopping your docker container you'll also have to remove it if you don't want to keep it i ha hapatia oh also a side note these names are randomly generated but you can use an option to name your containers so it's a little easier for you to type out but now they're all gone so i don't have any containers left as mentioned before you can add a name using the name option and we just do like mongo one and there are also other options like dash v standing for volume and this will link a file or a file directory from that container onto your system but as you can see this command is getting really long and that's where a tool like docker compose comes in handy and docker compose allows you to define your container in a file as well as running multiple containers for this example i'll use postgres and i'm going to copy and paste this code and i'm going to do this in my tutorials directory in a directory called docker example and all of this docker code or docker compose code is going to live in a file called docker compose.yaml and let's open that up and i'm going to use bin uh, i don't need this all right so just a little explanation of how this works the version line specifies the docker compose syntax that you're using because some of these options change depending on which version it is and then for each container it's going to be listed under services and then inside of that indent, these are the container names. So this one's DB, where you list the image. And you can also list the, the image version by doing something like colon dash and the version number. The restart options here just means that this container is going to restart in case your computer shuts down and then start up again. So your container is always going to be available. Environment are your environment variables. Here, you also want to define your port numbers. Postgres is 5432. And as mentioned, you can also use the volumes option to specifically link a directory from your machine onto the container's machine. An example of that is that if you want to persist your data onto your machine, you can specify the directory where the data is inside the database container. And the, the rule is the same as the port. The left side is your stuff, and the right side is the container stuff. Oh, also a note about the environment variables. It's a little different. The left side is actually gonna be the environment variable name, and then the right side is the value, just like a normal key value store. Here, however, you could use some sort of string interpolation here. So that you could store your environment variables outside of a docker compose file just in case you don't want it to be inside a version control like git or github and then add something like database password but for now i'm just gonna i'll just do postgres and postgres and then down here we have another container here and this is adminer it's just a gui interface to interact with sql databases it's also used for MySQL and what what other SQL databases are there? Just just yeah, it, it's used for other ones too. But once you have that file, and you'll also need to install Docker Compose, which is another command line interface. But you'll run Docker Compose up, and then add the option of dash D for daemon. And if you're on Linux, you'll add sudo in front and enter your password, of course. And then if you don't already have an image, it'll pull that image down. So right now I'm getting adminer. Now you can list all of your Docker containers and it's going to show up like this. The names are based on your 
directory. So it's going to prefix it with Docker example, which is the directory I'm in, and then the name of the container that you gave it. That's why it's because it's all in the same network in a way. So they can all talk to each other. Now let's try out that adminer interface, which we are listening to on 8080. And our database is Postgres. The server name here is going to be the container's name. So it's just DB. But we'll add Postgres, Postgres, Postgres. And now you can see everything inside. We can also do the same trick of running docker exec on that database. And the command to get the Postgres shell up is psql. I need to write container here. Oh, I know why. I'm not providing the correct user, so Postgres. There we go. Show all the tables, so there is none. Let's just create a table now, or as an example, thing. And I'll just have a, a simple table with just an ID. So we can select star from thing, and we get zero. But also in adminer, if we refresh, we'll see that table. But yeah, that's a quick introduction of using Docker for local applications, uh, primarily databases. There are definitely other things you can do with it. And if you run Docker help, it'll list out all the possible commands that you can use, which is a lot. So this is just the tip of the iceberg, but it is enough to get you going. All right, I hope you all found this helpful. If you did, consider subscribing and following, and I'll see you all next time.